Hi, my name is Benedict and the content that we're going to be looking at over the next little while, because this is a deep dive, uh, is obviously we'll start with an overview, which is what you'll get to see here, which is just broadly looking at what Reason is and also looking at why Reason as opposed to another door. Reason is not for everybody, but for the people it works for, it is really, really special in the door sphere. So we've moved now into the overview. Reason is obviously a complete virtual studio. They are actually one of the first to put down a complete virtual studio that really was usable. There were some before, um, but while they were usable, they struggled with bugs. They struggled with CPU usage, which was a massive problem back 24, 25 years ago. Um, and it's still always the edge of an issue, but it's nothing like it used to be. Uh, but Reason stuff was incredibly efficient, uh, as well as actually being very high quality. And that gave it an edge. An edge that it also had was that so many of us were coming from a hardware environment. And Reason behaved far more like a hardware environment than a lot of software. A lot of software did, and in my opinion, still does tend to behave more like an Excel spreadsheet, whereas Reason felt and feels like an actual studio in a box. Everyone says studio in a box, but, but Reason approached it a little differently, and, uh, and that's really stood out. It has very strong instruments, some with a very high pedigree, uh, which is not always talked about. Reason hasn't always said or made a big deal of. They haven't hidden it, but they haven't always made a big deal of who has designed some of their instruments. Subtractor, which is actually copied, Synth 1, is a copy of uh, Subtractor in many ways. But Subtractor is actually built with, um, I think it's Nord Lead people. Uh, so there's some real pedigree in several of their instruments. Uh, some of those, of the people who are working on early Reason devices, gone out on their own and are famous as they're being their own developers. Reason tend to do most of their stuff in-house now, but in the early days they brought in specialists and it really showed. Plus Reason was bulletproof. Just about everything crashed at that time. Quite reliably, Reason didn't. Um, they have had a few moments recently with some of the newer versions, but it's still more robust than not. And that's obviously a nice thing. Um, took a while for Reason to take on VST. In the meantime, they developed their own format called the Rack Extension, which was designed to become a fully-fledged member of the, the Rack and the Reason environment. Some people railed against it. Some developers have got all, you know, tossed their, their toys out of the, the, the cot kind of about it, their, their thing. Uh, but the Rack Extension is great because quite literally, as far as we were concerned, there was no particular difference between a third-party device and the stock devices. They largely behaved the same way, and Reason were pretty sort of speak to the hand about that. Even the refills, uh, the, the the audio packets, the packages that you could get, um, they were also quite rigid about those. And while it could be annoying, it did mean that at least in the early days, everything was incredibly consistent across the board which made it so much easier to swap sounds and things like that. You weren't having to go, oh my God, everything's all over the place. It was very, very even. Audio and CV routing. Now, most doors have come a very long way, but Reason were, as far as I'm aware, really the first to have the kind of audio and modulation routing that, that they have in their system. Yes, while other doors have caught up to a fair extent, there's not really anybody who does quite the same. Uh, and there are some contenders who are doing things, so not taking away from them. But again, reason sense of, in some ways, feeling like. It doesn't look like it's really not the same, but there's some sense of, oh, this, this makes sense to somebody who's worked in the real world with instruments and effects units and what have you. It, it, it immediately makes sense. Reason is designed to run really on three screens. And I'll get an image or two popped up here of Reason running on three screens. I run it on three screens. So the one screen that you're seeing here is doable, and they've increasingly sort of focused on that. 
Uh, Reason 13 has certain features with regards to that, which I've got to admit I'm a little ho-hum on. Uh, but it does mean that you can run it on a laptop or whatever. I personally always question those, you know, saying the series about music and having a 13-inch laptop and sort of go, it's not the professional tool but whatever, that's between you and, you know, your own conscience and your own feelings. But Reason was always designed from, from really early on to actually have three screens. So for myself, I have my uh, mixer on one screen in the middle. So I've got a little 19-inch monitor. Uh, I have my rack on the far left. So when I'm looking at the rack, it looks like this. Uh, so it's much easier to see. And I've got my main sequencer on my main screen. And to me, that's really, really a big deal because it, it's so much more elegant. And out of all the other doors that I've tried, I still think that it's window management in that sense is the most elegant. That's workflow. So it brings us to, well, why reason? <laughs> 